Don, what'd you bring for today? Well, I wanted to talk about um, uh, some of the insights I have, I think, in, in debating with theists. A lot of, a lot of hardcore atheists like to debate and they get into arguments and these sorts of things. And, and, and that's sort of part of the purpose of the show is to interact with theists. And um, a lot of atheists get frustrated with this sort of thing because it's, it's very hard to change people's minds. And, uh, and I've been frustrated too. But what, another thing that's kind of come up is that uh, there seems to be some very common problems with these sorts of debates, these sorts of arguments that, that are used over and over again. The, the, the reasons why which uh, theists believe in things or they present things tend to fall into three kind of problematic categories. And they, what are these problems? Well, they're, one category is lies and deception and falsehoods that, that, that whatever you're saying just isn't right. You're either you're de deceiving yourself or you're trying to deceive me. And the, the, the facts that you've started with are just, just for, false. They're, the facts that you're claiming are just false. And so that, that can't be a basis of, of building any sort of argument or any sort of uh, uh, a way of convincing somebody else. The ne next one is logical fallacies. Is like, well, you, you, you put a string of things together and then you reach a conclusion that doesn't, doesn't add up from that because you've used a logical fallacy or something that just doesn't logically follow from the, the facts you've presented. And the third one is emotional manipulation where, where you've, you've given up on argument altogether and you're trying to, to you're trying to mess with somebody's head, and that has no bearing on on God or whatever. So, so my new my new tactic in these debates is I'll is I'll sort of say when 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 somebody starts doing these things, I'll say, well, hey, you know, I, I commonly see these three problems, and um, you know, debate with me, and and you can use God on your side, and you can, you can use prayer and all this stuff, and the minute you you say one of these things, you sort of admit that that whatever you're whatever you're presenting is garbage because because these you can't build anything reasonable from these things, and and why should you? The truth doesn't need these things. Why? If you if you're selling something really wonderful, then you don't need to lie, right? There's no need for that. And so, and if you're, and if theists are claiming that their God is real, then they shouldn't, they shouldn't have to use these tactics. So, so far, um, uh, my frustration is a little bit lower using this sort of, this sort of tactic in the sense that I, I don't have to go on and on and on with people because um, I get to stop. And I get to stop with sort of uh, a reason to stop. And uh, unfortunately, I'm still disappointed in the sense that I've, I have yet to have anybody uh, any theist debate with me and and have a debate and convince me of anything or convince any objective rational person of anything without using these tactics. So um, so I've started to call these these three the the deception, logical fallacies, and emotional manipulation is the three pillars of apologetics is is what I'm calling them today. And so that's the topic of the show. This is kind of a follow-on to a show that Jen and Martin did about three months ago where they were talking about how apologetics fail. I'm talking a little bit more about why they fail or, or the categories of failure and, and so on. So today, feel free to call in and say, hey, you know, I got this great argument for, for God and it doesn't suffer these problems. Or, you know, if you're a minister, you know, if you've got something beyond uh, deception and, and, and logical fallacies and, and emotional manipulation, bring it on. We'd love to hear it. So, so what I want to do today is talk about uh, these three in turn very quickly and then talk about some of the common arguments that we get uh, for God and, and why it falls into these categories and, and how it, uh, many, many of the things we hear are combinations of, the, of these things. So uh, for deception and lies and falsehood, well, this often includes self-deception. Sometimes people believe things that are just aren't true and then they repeat them uncritically without ever having looked into them. Um, and of course, you know, the number, you can't, just, just like two wrongs don't make a right, you can't add up a whole bunch of lies and arrive at the truth. So you, if you're making an argument, you have, to, you have to always have truthful stuff in the argument. Because as soon as you as soon as you admit to a lie in an argument, then then it invalidates the entire argument, and you can't you can't get anywhere. Often these sorts of deceptions are just bald assertions where somebody's making some claim without any justification or without any any idea that, that justification is needed for that claim. So here's some big ones. Um, 
uh, and, and so, uh, for example, early Christianity valued embellishment. You know, they, they thought at that time that the more grandiose and wonderful the story they could tell, the more people they would get in or whatever, the better it would be. Um, you know, today we, we, we try not to do those things or we frown on those things because if those embellishments and things aren't true, then, then it just sort of invalidates whatever you're trying to do. The virgin birth is a perfect example of that. It's like, okay, well, you know, virgin births are a common, common thing in mythology. Let's, let's have Jesus be, be born of a virgin. And, and it's, it's a pretty well-known thing that Jesus, uh, the, the, the nativity uh, story of Jesus is, is made up, uh, is, was invented after the fact, and it's just mythology. So this is uh, a, good, a good example of, you know, if you, if you make these claims or if you put these displays on your yard, you're sort of lying to the world. Um, also claims about Jesus raising the dead or walking on water, these sorts of things. You know, they, they, they need better justification than just some sort of story in the Bible. So, you know, by themselves, they're not that, they're not that convincing and they're not that interesting. Um, in more modern times, we have the Christian nation myth, which is a, a, just a propaganda campaign that's, that's coming out, uh, the Christian founding and these sorts of things. Yes, yes, many of the founders were Christian, but, but um, they intentionally made a secular government, and, and please don't forget that, and they intentionally separated church and state, and, and the, that was, you know, the core of the, the founding uh, of, our, of our nation. Um, another, another example of a big, a big lie and falsehood is this intelligent design movement. Um, there is absolutely no, uh, nothing solid behind that. It's just a, another propaganda campaign that, that, that supposedly uh, uh, evolution is a theory in crisis sort of, sort of thing, and that's just a lie. So, uh, and, and there's a lot of equivocation about the word theory, the way, the way scientists use theory and the way the common person uses theory are two different things. And by saying just a theory, you're, you're equivocating those two, and that's a type of deception. So uh, uh, those are some big ones that we see uh, as far as deception. Here are some common ones. Um, assertions without evidence uh, to claim that Jesus loves you. Well, you know, demonstrate a Jesus first and demonstrate, you know, what, what, what do you mean by love in this context? Love often gets uh, uh, redefined. Um, uh, Jesus rode, rose on the third day from, from, being, from being killed. Well, that's another sort of assertion that uses the Bible as evidence. Well, if, if we don't believe in the Bible, if, if, if uh, you don't have any evidence that supports this, this Bible, why should we believe it? Um, another one we hear often is, is AIDS is God's judgment against gays or, you know, whatever weather phenomenon is, is a, against gays or against, you know, whatever. You, you hear those sorts of things. And it's just, it's just a, a bunch of BS, right? Because you don't have any evidence of your God and here you are trying to attribute uh, some behavior of this non-existent thing or pro probably non-existent thing to, to uh, weather, which, which really has no rhyme or reason to it. Um, Haiti made a pact with the devil. Uh, Pat Robertson said that recently. This is just BS, is, is, is really the category this is. Um, as far as biblical interpretation, you know, people love to, to project their own beliefs onto the Bible and say, oh, the Bible agrees with me, therefore God says this. And there's been a recent study about how um, everybody's concept of God is really sort of a mirror image of their own beliefs and right. biases and these sorts of things. And, it, and so really all you're doing is you're, is you're puffing, puffing yourself up to make your, make your beliefs, uh, you know, God's beliefs, and it's in a way kind of a puffer fish sort of uh, deception. And, and why should you, we believe you if, if, if one person's belief is this and another person's belief is the opposite of this? you sort of cancel each other out. There's, not a, there's obviously not a God there. You're just sort of making it up. Uh, another tactic you see in this area is, is uh, saying, oh, well, um, what's the likelihood of, of, uh, of a single-celled organism popping into existence out of nowhere, and, and gee, how unlikely is it? And, but what they're not doing and where they're being dishonest is they're not comparing the likelihood of God popping into existence out of out of nowhere. So so there's not a valid comparison. You know, just because something is unlikely doesn't mean it's impossible. And if you're going to look at likelihoods, you you've got to do due diligence and compare it 
to the likelihood of the thing you're, you're asserting is more likely. So, so these, are, these are some of the ways that we see deceptions and falsehoods uh, propagated. And, and you often hear these early in arguments where people will, will just make claims and, and then, they'll, then the atheist will have to back up. He'll have to ask them, you know, why do you believe that? Or what, what's your evidence for that? And so on. When you, when you get into a more sophisticated argument and, 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 the, and the more sophisticated apologists, they start to stringing together logical arguments. And so there's some fairly famous arguments for the existence of God. There's the tele, teleological argument, the cosmological argument, the ontological argument, and these sorts of things. And all, all of them, um, the, the uh, tag, right, the transcendental mm -hmm. argument is another one we've tangled with. Every last one of them has, suffers from the problem of logical fallacies. Where, so for, here, here's an example. Uh, Don is a man, I'm a man. Uh, men are fallible, all men are fallible. Okay, that would be the second argument. And then, then you might come to the conclusion God exists. So that would be a notion of a logical fallacy. You, you arrive at the conclusion you want, but this, the steps just don't add up, right? So that's kind of logical fallacies 101. And, and it turns out that there, you know, you might, you might start with some facts that are true, but, but, but the conclusions you reach from them are false because you've, you've missed a step or you've done this. And, and, and you can think of these as sophisticated lies. They're, they're lies that, that look like you're, you're reasoning well, but, but in actuality, you, you dig it down a little bit and they're, they're false. And so we see a lot of these. Um, a common one is an argument from popularity, the thing, something like, uh, oh, well, everybody believes in, in God, therefore God must exist. It, that's an argument from popularity. A lot of people believe in God, therefore it must be true. Well, the, 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 truth, the truth of something doesn't matter who believes it, right? The, the, it's not a popularity contest. And, 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 and a, and a counter, counter example of this is a lot of people believe the earth was flat at one time. That, that doesn't mean it was flat then, and it doesn't mean it is flat now, and it never has been flat. So who cares, right? It doesn't matter whether a lot of people believe it. Uh, another one is called false dichotomy, where um, you hear that in the, in the famous lunatic liar or lord. I forget who, who, who brought that up. C.S. Like, Lewis. Okay. C.S. Lewis. So, so is Jesus a lunatic? Is he a liar? Is he a lord? And there's a long, complicated description. He can't be any of those, so he must be lord. Well, this is actually a false trichotomy, right? Because there's three, three options given, but a fourth one might be legend, right? So legend is, is conspicuously absent from this list, and it turns out that that's the most likely one. And so it's a bit of a, a mind game where you're saying, well, you've got to choose between these, three, these two or three things, and the real choice is off, not even on, presented to you. And so that's a bit of a, a thing. An another one we see all the time is shifting the burden of proof. Atheists doubt the existence of God, and we have yet to see evidence for for God, right? So, in a sense, we're saying um, we haven't, we don't have any compelling reason to believe in God. That's our position. Um, if if you are saying that there is a God, you're making a positive claim, and that needs to be backed up with evidence. You you have to say, well, the the uh, you know, if you're claiming that there's a God that exists, you have to say, oh, this is, and this is the reason why. So what, what often happens is the theist will say, oh, well, you have to prove that God doesn't exist. And my, my sort of canonical counterexample to this is, well, you know, I can claim to be a millionaire, and if I say you can't prove that I'm not a millionaire, does that make me rich? Yeah. <laughs> right? No. Whether or not you can prove something doesn't have any, any basis on whether or it's true or not. So, you, you know, it's, this is a matter of convincing someone. Well, I'd rephrase that. Okay. Whether or not you can prove something does have it does impact whether or not you can tell it's true. It's right. The being unable to disprove something doesn't tell you whether or not it's right. True. Right. Okay. That's that's a better way of saying it. Uh, there's an argument from incredulity uh, of I can't believe this, so it must be true. So there's there's a whole mess of these, and and I think that um, atheists uh, learn these, and, and I think that a serious atheist. Uh, gets to know these these logical fallacies and, and gets to recognize them because they come up all the time in in like advertising and politics and these sorts of things and and in a weird way I think I think atheists are better off for this sort of thing we're we're more aware of these ways of manipulating people and we're we're 
we're kind of on top of that. We, we still make mistakes, right? I make mistakes all the time, but I, but I think I'm uh, better equipped than a lot of folks uh, to recognize these sorts of things and so on. So the third one I want to talk about is often when the theist gets frustrated and, and can't, can't make any sort of reasonable, reasonable argument anymore, they get frustrated and they start with the emotional manipulation. Well, you know, God's going to get you is, is kind of often where it goes. Is, 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 and this is uh, in the category of emotional manipulation and thuggery. And it's a plea to believe in God or Jesus for emotional reasons, which is, which is a terrible reason to believe for anything. It, it, you know, God, the existence of God or Jesus or whatever does not depend on your mental state, right? If, if he did, then, then we could just say that, that these things are a figment of my imagination and, and we'd be done, right? So um, reality doesn't depend on your emotional state. This is just a way of bullying somebody and, and it's also fundamentally dishonest. So, so if you haven't gotten it yet, all three of these mechanisms, all three of these pillars of apologetics are dishonest and therefore there's nothing there. See, and rich, religion is rich with emotional undertones. So, you know, you, you can think of the emotional uh, associations we have with God. Well, we fear God because he's a big bully, a big, big thug. We, uh, we uh, can feel hate of the non-pious and non-believers. That's a common thing, you know, the people that aren't, aren't kowtowing to the same God. We can be in awe of the power of God. We can feel threatened uh, or we can feel like we're going to get a reward. Uh, God is the judge. We also can, can feel this notion of uh, fatherhood or being, being a, a subject of a Lord. So all of these are kind of rich emotional feelings that you feel with God, and these are, these are ways that, that people get manipulated by, by this notion of God is because of all these emotional connotations. With Jesus, it's kind of the opposite. You, you feel um, uh, there's a strong association with love and love of humanity, uh, there's an association of guilt, a, a feeling empathy for Jesus' suffering and, and the, the sort of guilt or whatever. Um, uh, there's uh, idolization for how he supposedly dealt with the poor and these sorts of things. So it's almost like a good cop, bad cop thing, you know. No, no matter what emotion you have, you can either associate it with God or Jesus, and it's almost like a codependent sort of thing, you know. Uh, Jesus loves you, but, but God <coughs> thinks you're a wretch that needs to be tortured. And, and Jesus and God are the exact same thing. And, and it's just very odd, uh, sort of mind, mind's fuck, as far as I can tell. So and um, they, the, the frustration <laughs> isn't limited to theists and, at all. Uh -huh. Frustration is a, is a human trait. And I think I've, I'm a perfect example of somebody who's demonstrated that, you know, being able to get frustrated uh, over and over again. Yeah. Um, and actually, if I can pause for a second, there's yeah. a call that actually deals with that.